the case study is um, the, the first case study doesn't sound like it was from an industry, and that is to do with a, uh, a Sudoku generator. Now, it sounds like a very trivial piece of code. You'd think, well, it can't take much to generate a Sudoku puzzle. But what the uh, guys are doing, so it's a couple of guys um, from Scandinavia, and um, they're very experienced senior programmers and uh, developers working with a big telecoms company. And what, they, what the particular challenge was was to um, produce a Sudoku puzzle that had the maximum number of clues. So there was that the, the, it, it's probably you need to do some Googling and read up um, exactly what the characteristics are of a, 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 a Sudoku puzzle with the maximum number of clues. You think it was easy, but it, it's not actually because you cannot have r clues that are redundant. So every clue that you put on must have an impact on the solution. You know. Um, anyway, so there, there, there existed uh, what was known as a 38 -er. Um, so there was a third, uh, Sudoku puzzle with 38 clues. And what they were trying to do, along with other people, was trying to find out the first 39er. And so it was a, com a competition. Uh, it wasn't an official competition, but it was just a lot of the different programmers trying to create a, a generator that would create the first 39er. So this case study goes through what they did to uh, write the code, how they changed some of the algorithms, um, how they used um, SSE um, uh, intrinsics and instructions to make their um, Sudoku generator much faster, and, and then how they introduced parallelism. So not really an industry thing, but, but it's actually represented quite a lot of development time, and um, they were even uh, using they, they used a, a cluster from Intel, uh, one of the clusters in Winish, to run their final set of tests, and they, they were there first with the first 39er. No doubt there's somebody trying to find one with 40 clues now. I, I've, uh, uh, no, uh, I have no idea what the status is of that, but that, that, that's the first case study. Um, and there are some nice little technical little bits and pieces that they did, which are really interesting, uh, particularly on the using the SIM, SIMD registers and so on. Um, the, the second case study uh, came out of uh, some research work, um, and this was from Jan uh, Galansky that you, you mentioned earlier on. So um, he is uh, doing some research at York University, and they were doing simulation of um, how stars uh, were created. So it was a typical end bodies um, problem, and that case study just goes through some of the steps that they did um, to change their code power and so on and, and to, to get best performance. And again, talking about some of the algorithms that they used in that. Um, the third case study um, is based on some research work, so an experimental product called Array Building Blocks, and, and that is a, an experimental product in Intel. I, I don't know whether it will ever become a real product, but it was one of those products that uh, Intel um, uh, created to, to help um, programmers to make code run parallel, particularly in terms of the respect of the data. So we, I talked about vectorization already. So, so what the array building blocks was a, is a template library um, to help uh, so that as programmers uh, wrote an application, then um, they could run the application on different hardware. And there was a, a just-in-time compilation that happened just uh, when the program first run on, on particular targets. And, and what the case study looks at is how the um, uh, some analysis code to do with the collider, the CERN collider, um, and it, it's, it gives an example of of how they use the ray building blocks to to speed up their analysis. I don't think that the analysis was ever used in 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 real sort of discovery work, um, but it was a, an experimental piece of work on using the ray building blocks, and um, that sort of, in a sense, it, it also shows. I mean. What we're doing at Intel often is trying to find out new and different areas, different technologies that can be used, and uh, array building blocks is one of those experimental technologies um, that that, that uh, we promote. And so that's, that was the third case study. And then the, the last case study, uh, talking about paralyzing legacy code, 
That was taking uh, an old and well-known benchmark, dry stones, uh, which is written in really old-fashioned sea, and all the typical problems of old legacy code sit in there, you know, lots of global variables, um, code without prototypes, um, and uh, not very well modularized and so on. And what we did was we took that and m uh, made it parallel using different techniques. So we used OpenMP, we used Silk Plus. And, and our goal was for that... Um, piece of work was to um, how best could we make this code parallel without reworking all the code. So we, we had some special interest in terms of the, what you might call the edit distance. So how much editing effort was there required to make this code parallel. And because it was such a, I say an awful piece of code, in its day it was a really good piece of code. So, um, but in terms of today's standard for coding, it, it, it kind of breaks lots of conventions. Um, then what that case study did was to look at the different programming um, practices that one could use, you know, so op OpenMP and Silk Plus, for instance. And um, it, uh, the, the end result of that was that um, using wrappers, C++ wrappers with Silk Plus, uh, with, so with um, Silk Plus, yeah, was, was the way that was least intrusive uh, in terms of code changing. So... Uh, now, not everyone's interested in keeping code changes to a minimum, but that was, it is relevant for people maintaining, you know, old, old code.